I printed the bottom part out of the anthracite PLA. You could use different materials but PLA is enough. I've made some screw holes on the bottom in case I would need to tear it down in the future. As for display, I'm still using the same old micro display. You can find it easily on AliExpress. I'm using my display with square lens. It has a lot of magnification power. Here's the display socket. It's basically a piece of plastic which holds the display and fits into the main frame. Here it is assembled. I've simply pushed the lens and display inside the plastic frame. It's good to go now. The whole display module simply snaps into the main plastic frame. It could use bigger frame for the display module, but it fits well as is. I didn't make any holder for the display driver yet. I've also printed blank display holder as I will use only one display. You could obviously use two of them. Blank piece snaps in as well. And here is the whole bottom part so far. It's down on me that I forgot to make a hole for the cable. I printed the top cover using the red PLA. I think it could be darker shade of red, but it's okay. It was printed with samples using graph and with about 50% info. That's pretty much my usual setting. For the logo I will be using the Citadel miniature paint. This one is called Scaven Blight Dinge. For the painting tool I use regular resistor. It's perfect for filling the holes with paint. It turned out pretty good, there are some paint stains here and there, but of course those can be easily cleaned. For the main cable I will use regular USB cable as it has 4 wires inside. I actually forgot to make a cable hole in my design, so now I need to make it in post. I've made a simple hole with my soldering iron. Don't use your main soldering iron for any plastic related tasks. I've stripped the cable down to the wires, I'll need only 3 of them so I've cut the 4th one. I've soldered the cable to my trimmed LCD controller and secured the connections with captain tape. I've put the controller inside my case and connected it to the display. And now I simply put on the top lid. This is how it looks so far. It's still missing side covers and face foam. This is the side cover, it features my Nintendo Life logo. I bought this really cheap smartphone VR headset which has some parts that I can use. I primarily need the headband and face foam but any additional stuff is welcome. It was about 2 bucks so I don't really mind breaking anything. The face foam in its unit came with the plastic bracket, which holds the whole thing in place. The face foam which I bought is way larger than my headset, that could be a problem. I've decided to keep the lenses, as I could use them in another project. Head strap looks a bit large, but it will do. For my build, I will have to chop off the top part of the head strap. Now it's more suitable for my project. I've had to take out the plastic part from the face foam. It made it difficult to fit the foam on my headset. I will use the regular hot glue to attach the foam to the plastic enclosure. Top half fits perfectly, but the lower one needs to be squeezed a bit. It would be way easier to buy fast shark face foam, but I can find it anywhere at reasonable price. I've squeezed it a little bit and it more or less fits now. I've remade the side plastics so I can attach the strap directly to them. It was a bit difficult to squeeze the head strap inside, but I've managed to do it. I did the same for the other side and now I'm ready to attach it to the headset. 
It holds really well since the whole device is really lightweight. I had to use some black tape as the headband was way too large. It looks pretty good but I hate how big the face hole is. It definitely could be smaller. I've designed this little box which will connect the headset with power and video signal. I need to use step down voltage regulator as headset uses 3.3 volt. The main idea is to slide the headset cable through the hole and solder everything inside the case. I've also made these pillars here which will hold the cable in place. It's a really tight fit, this will ensure that the cable won't be pulled out by accident. I found this yellow cable socket which will work perfectly with this project. I force it inside the plastic enclosure hole, once again it's really tight fit. I will reuse my DC socket from the Wii Micro Project. Looks really nice so far. And now I need to solder the DC wires to the voltage regulator. Now I have power supply to the voltage regulator. As always, I'm using M3 threaded inserts for the case. This time only 4 of them are needed. Now it's time to check if voltage regulator works properly. 5V is fine. And now I just put the lid on top. Looks good enough. Now it's time to see if it works. I've hooked it up to my Wii Mini. It will be really hard to show, but there is a clear video feed inside. It looks perfect in person. And that's pretty much how I've made the weird wild boy. Thanks for watching everyone and see you soon!